Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, there's a lot of talk and a lot of buzz going around right now about Margaritaville at Sea's new offer where you can sail unlimited for the year for $899. Does it sound too good to be true? Well, if you read the fine print, it might just be. So on the face of it, it looks like, hey, these sailings sail out of Florida and they go down to the Bahamas. They're two-day cruises. So every two days, a ship leaves Florida and heads to the Bahamas. And you can jump on this cruise for $899 if you buy the premium package for the year. That sounds pretty darn cheap. And it, like, if you were able to sell 365 days a year for $899, that's just you know, a few dollars a day to be at a sale on a cruise ship all year. Is that too good to be true? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because you got to read the fine print. And on the fine print, it states, first off, the number one thing is you cannot sail on consecutive days, uh, cruises. So you cannot book 14 days in a row. You would have to book every second cruise going out instead of it so you'd have to get off wait another day get back on now if you live in the area where the cruise ship leaves that's doable if you're in canada like i am i'm not flying back and forth or staying in hotels every day so this this offer is completely useless to me second off you're not allowed to combine it with their stay at land tours as well which they'll have their sail and sail and stay kind of thing where you can sail over to the bahamas stay there for like a week and then take that cruise back. That's not included in this deal. You cannot just take the one-way trip and get off in the Bahamas or the one-way trip and get back off in Florida. Well, okay, that limits some things as well. Also, you won't be able to book during big holidays. Fourth of July, Thanksgiving weekend, Christmas, you won't be able to book the cruise during that time because obviously that's peak sailing and selling time. You won't be able to get it. Not only that, you can't book a cruise more than 72 hours before the ship actually sets sail. In other words, you can't really plan for this cruise. You can't say, okay, I want to take this two days and I'm going to go while I'm in Florida in, in, uh, in July. I'll book a cruise for two days while I'm there. You can't do it. You have to wait till you're 72 hours ahead of time for this package to work. Also, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's more. There's absolutely more. Um, yeah, it, the cabin is, is not guaranteed. You can book it, but they will only give it to you if one is available. And it doesn't go for balconies and suites. It only goes for cabins that are windowless inside cabins or an ocean view cabin. Those are the only two qualifying cabins. You don't choose where on the ship you get to stay. They will assign it to you and you will be saying, and that's only if there's one available. So if you travel all the way down there and you get ready to go, there might not be a cabin available. It, they all could be, all the interior could be sold out and only suites left. And then this does not apply. Then if you're willing to do all that, if you're willing to go through all those complicated things and everything and you decide I'm gonna buy this anyway, well, if you think it's only $899, you're wrong. There are more fees attached than just that. There are, first of all, about $94 in taxes, fees, and port expenses that you have to pay every single booking. So every two days, every two bookings. Throw on to that a $19.99 booking fee. That's right, they're charging you to just make the booking. Then you also have to pay the gasoline surcharge, right now it's around $12, $12.50. That can go up and down depending on, of course, the cost of fuel. And then you have to pay 19 something for gratuities. All in all, it adds up to around close to $160 for yourself, plus the $899, and that's every time you book. So if you decided to do this, and you manage to get on every second day, you're still paying roughly $80 a day extra besides that $8.99. Now, $80 a day doesn't sound that bad, but hey, hold on a minute. 
hold on a minute there's more <laughs> there's more in that little details as well you cannot sail solo that's right there has to be two people in that cabin and they will also be charged that extra $160 worth of taxes and fees and char charges, etc., which now adds up to $320 every two days for a couple to do that, plus, you know, etc., etc., etc. And if you decide to go on your own, like for instance, I'm sailing solo right now on Princess Cruises, my cabin does not charge me twice for port expenses and taxes and port fees. I only pay that once because I'm a solo traveler. I only pay one gratuity, which is, you know, the way it should be. I'm only one person. I already have to pay double for my cabin. Well, on this package, you got to pay all those fees, whether you're one person or two persons. So yeah, next to $320 every. So if you're solo, you got $160 basically every day that you have to pay to take this package and sail every second day at the very most, that you can't book in advance, you'll be in a cabin every, different every single time, and you won't know until almost the day of the cruise whether or not you have a cabin available. So yeah, that old adage of, does it sound too good to be true, kinda stand, now, this, it is an interesting offer to try this in the industry. You know, there's timeshares out there and things, and I'm wondering if at some point they might try that. I'm wondering if Margarita Villa and C might try timeshare bookings instead of just these two-day things. Because in all honesty, unless you live within like 50 miles of the cruise port, there's no incentive for you to take this deal as well as, you know, I can go on a carnival ship, I can go on some Royal Caribbean, some Norwegian, for around $100, $110 a day. So when you add that up and you add up the fees that they're charging you, it kind of offsets each other, and I can book it for seven days and 10 days and 12 days. I don't have to worry about getting off the ship and on the ship and off the ship and on the ship. It just seems like a really big hassle to me, even, if I lived across the street from the cruise ship, it would still seem to me to not be the best deal out there. At least in my opinion, with the extra costs that you have to do that, the hoops you have to jump through to get into it, and the fact that you have no idea what cabin they're putting you in, you cannot get a balcony in this deal, you can't pay more to get a balcony, you're stuck where you are, and they basically will assign you the ship at the last moment as long as there's a cabin left. What do you guys think? Do you think this deal is worth it now? Now, it sounded great when you heard it off at the beginning, but when you read that fine print and you add those expenses on there and the caveats of all the different things you can't do, well, to me, it just, I don't think that kind of deal is for me. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, and I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.